This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, May the 18th, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Venantius of Camerino. Born sometime around A.D. 257, he was martyred and martyred hard today in either 251 or 253, around the age of 15. He was discovered to be a Christian along with 10 others, including a priest named Porphyrius and the local bishop Leontius. It's possible that he may have been a seminarian, even though that word wouldn't exist for another thousand years. No one's entirely sure if the teenager did something particular to goad the soldiers, but they went after Viantius with gusto. It's almost farcical. The soldiers scourged him with whips, then burned him with torches, then hung him over a fire. Then they beat on him to get him good and bloody before throwing him to the lions in the arena. And after they were done with all that, may he may have still been alive, maybe not, but they threw his body over a cliff. His body was recovered and buried outside the city. A hundred years later, a basilica was built there, and a few miraculous springs of water started to gurgle up. Those springs were the place to be for lepers and folks with ulcers. Lots and lots and lots of healings have been associated with the spring waters of Camerino ever since. Today in 1896, we got solid evidence that the Supreme Court is not infallible. SCOTUS ruled today on Plessy v. Ferguson. There were really two nasty consequences of the decision. First, this was SCOTUS giving their approval for racial segregation and the doctrine of separate but equal. And while that was perfectly reasonable at the time from a big fancy office building in Washington, D.C., in reality it was a joke. Resources in the South remained segregated with little or no oversight to the equal part. Black schools were dilapidated. They lacked textbooks, teachers, some of them lacked plumbing, while most of the public money went to the new white schools. Perhaps even worse than that decision, though, was the corollary reality that the SCOTUS felt it was qualified to rule like a monarch over all 50 states and thus to declare valid or null an entire class of laws, policies, regulations, and rules each implemented by local state government and by the will of the people. Without Plessy Ferguson, you don't have Roe Wade or Oberfell Hodge. This was one of the first moments that the court began to understand its dictatorial power. And 50 years later, the court would overturn Plessy Ferguson and Brown v. Board of Education. Even then, though, the chief court under Chief Justice Earl Warren was all too happy to make moral decisions for the entire nation from their ivory tower without any reference to appeal, debate, or the will of the people of the United States. Today's the birthday back in 1920 of Karol Wo- Josef Wojtyla, born in Wadowice, Poland, to religious parents. He was destined for greatness. He went to a clandestine seminary under Nazi rule and was bishop of his hometown of Krakow under communist rule. He was one of the most important Catholic philosophers of the last 300 years and was a major player at the Second Vatican Council. When the compromised candidate for pope died after a whopping 30 days in office, the Polish juggernaut became the first non-Italian pope in 500 years. He took the name John Paul II in a symbolic nod to John XXIII, who called Vatican II, and Paul VI, who implemented it, and to John Paul I, who expected to spend his papacy continuing the effort. Despite his name, John Paul II spent little time merely continuing someone else's efforts. He was a pioneer in every way. He was the first pope to do almost everything modern. He traveled extensively. He wrote and spoke extensively. He was shot on the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. He visited Auschwitz. He dialogued with the East and with the Jews. He reopened the door to the traditional Latin Mass. He prevented schisms across the world. He had a hand in bringing down the USSR. And he died in the public eye to show us about the mercy of God. Pope St. John Paul II, pray for us. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.